he smashed it. Smashed the little lucky craft. Oh my gosh, what a jumper. Fishing freaks, welcome on back to the channel. Still up here in beautiful Colorado, a different mountain range right now, but up here doing some family camping and we're gonna do some trout fishing today. And today's episode is sponsored by our friends at Mystery Tackle Box. You guys have probably heard about MTB if you've been around this channel long enough, but they are a subscription tackle service that puts a bunch of great tackle in a box, save you money, ships right to your door, and they go ahead and pick out the best techniques and the best lures, or just new techniques that are coming along in the market, they put them in the box, and they help you learn those new techniques or help you learn classic techniques that go along with the month. So everything coincides together. And this is not just bass boxes too, I've done a ton of mystery tackle box pro bass boxes on this channel but today i'm using the trout box they have other species on there they have general pro they have elite boxes it's pretty much everything to fit uh, your fishing techniques and the style you want to fish and the level of money that you want to spend but if you want to save on your first box go to the link down below top of the description enter the code mondo at checkout and you're gonna save on your first box so go ahead and get signed up it's a great gift. Holidays are coming up soon, so if you got a fisherman in your family, this is the gift to get them. Or if you got a loved one, maybe you love them so much you want to give them a very special box and have them open it, and then they're going to love you. I'm going to give you lots of kisses, maybe. So click the link down below, go get signed up, use that code MONDO, and also check out the library of awesome videos that they have to help you become a better dangler. Okay, so. MTB, thank you again for sponsoring today's video. Hopefully there's something in here that is gonna help us catch fish in the lake and the streams out here because I've struggled over the last few days trying to get on some trout. I haven't dangled too hard. I've been doing family camping, but today I'm really gonna try to dial in some trout and maybe some kokanee. And LFD is actually down on that point right now. I'm hoping that he's got a good report for me come up here in a minute, but yesterday, he caught his first cutthroat trout on a fly. It was so cool because it was the exact same spot. I caught one last year and he got to catch his first one. So a very cool special father-son moment right there. We've yet to have a fish meal up here because the fishing has been so tough. So the goal is today between me and LFD to go out there and catch a few kokanee, a few trout. The hope is we're gonna get some of these on the grill. There's nothing like a delicious fresh trout in the mountain air, 10,500 feet up here, baby. Let's go get some. We're gonna take a couple of fishing rods today and we're gonna take a backpack. And I've got a bunch of tackle in the backpack. I got a net and then I'm taking uh, the stuff from the box and something I'm really happy to see in here. It's a technique that I haven't tried yet is using some little egg type stuff. This is uh, bio bait. It's infused with fish oil. Looks like little eggs and it even comes with some uh, snelled leader hooks, some, some small little bait hooks. Another really cool looking lure is this Lucky Craft. Oh, getting fancy here with the Lucky Craft. I've got uh, quite a bit of spoons. I've got some rooster tails, like some of that traditional stuff. Uh, but I think this right here, we might have to soak to get these lake fish to bite. And if I'm out of breath, it's because I'm at 10,500 feet, okay? It's been a, it's been a struggle. LFD, I see you working down there. I should say they, they, uh, they just left me alone in the peaceful nature. Well, give me a, give me a heads up. Give me a report. What do I need to do or not do? Well, they just started coming to the surface. Yeah. Right? And you it's can about see 10 o'clock. You can see there's some of them out in the deep. And, uh, I might just walk down here and fling it for a while. Yeah, that might be good right there for the the deeper they seem to be coming up there as well but good gosh pretty right yeah you know even though i didn't catch a fish just sitting on this and casting is just phenomenal i you got your first cutthroat yesterday no i know i know and we're gonna cook that kokanee up i'm gonna catch a few more yeah time for more coffee there's a cinnamon roll up there osg special how do they turn out a little crusty uh, i've noticed a lot of dead birds a little you know sparrow type birds and i think they got caught in the storm and just died and 
I think that might be an indicator of what the other animals are doing as well. So we'll see. Before we soak some bait, I'm gonna try one of those, that little Lucky Craft Lure. I'm gonna try this little guy right here. This thing looks juicy. Let's say this is a six pound, four pound line kind of deal right here. And this looks like some sort of spending, it's not a jerk bait because it doesn't have a bill. It's like a countdown bait. See what this looks like in the water. Oh yeah, she's a sinker. Oh yeah. If I can get this thing out here, it's not terrible. I think a kokanee salmon would destroy this. Typically the spoons and rooster tails work pretty good. They like that flash, but they do see a ton of them. I know there's fish here because we see them come up and surface. We see those trout come up and they're eating bugs or they're just kind of coming up to the top, but they're just not firing away. Oh, got one. Got one. He smashed it. Smashed the little lucky craft. Oh my gosh, what a jumper. Oh, take it easy, baby. I think you might be a trout. Bring him over here. Y'all, this is the first fish I've caught out of this lake in days. This is a good sign. Different lure. It's working. This might be a rainbow. It's got a weird nose. I think it's a rainbow. Oh yeah. Looks like a male rainbow. He's got a real prominent thing going on on his face. Come here, baby. Yes, sir. No, that's a kokanee. It's a kokanee. All right. Awesome, guys. Look at this fish. Let me clean him up just a little bit so you guys can see him. Look at his nose. Like, just look at how he's starting to get that, that, uh, I don't even know what you call that. I should know that since I studied fisheries ecology, but it's been, it's been a minute. That's awesome. I don't think I actually hooked him in the mouth. I think he just swiped at it, but these little hooks are sharp. All right, mystery tackle box. Thank you, hooking me up with a new lure. Literally first couple casts. I have, I'm telling you guys, I've come behind camp, I've fished a ton. We've only caught one of these and it's been on a spoon, but that is a very good sign. So let's get our stringer. Still no trout. I haven't seen a single trout swimming at the surface, but we got ourselves a kokanee. Awesome. Those are tasty. That's awesome. If I can get just a couple more of these, we're going to be in good shape. I am working this like a jerk bait though. Just little small twitches and I'm letting it sink. It has a pretty good sink rate on it. Just trying to get it down there. These little kokanee think are a little deeper. We're gonna migrate just a little bit. Keep seeing some activity on this point right here. So I'm gonna try it. There's another boil right on the other side of this point. There's got to be a fish in here. Another one just ate at the surface right there. Oh, got him. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, freaking destroyed it on that point. Oh, come here, baby, nice sandy beach. I need you. I think it's another kokanee, it's going crazy. It is, another kokanee. Yes, sir, right on that point. Good move, good move coming over here. Very sandy one, but a fish. Don't wanna mess up these hooks on here, they're really delicate little hooks this guy's got some teeth and some bone there okay hooks out hooks out That's nice. got another one these are two kokanee salmon we got here guys and you caught one yesterday right dad right so that's in the cooler if we get one more we're gonna have one for everybody which would be awesome Two bites, two hookups, and land. 
that is good news y'all i was kind of worried with that little jerk bait how that would do but i think the treble hooks are holding up really good i seem to lose a lot more on spoons and rooster tails when they first come up it's like they're just having gyrations mega gyrations but one more y'all one more we got one for everybody except for emmy but she's probably not gonna eat it anyways i'm counting to five to ten seconds when i first throw it out and then i'll just give it couple pops just like a jerk bait and then count a few seconds and then keep going just trying to keep it a few feet below the surface two to three feet below the surface i'm just gonna walk down this bank a little ways i'm a long ways from my stringer oh hey another dead bird that's a little falcon so strange there's just broken trees everywhere it's dead birds. I found like dead little, found a dead weasel, some dead little chipmunks. It's like either the lake is poisoned or that bad windstorm, snowstorm just killed everything. Oh, I definitely just saw it. Oh, there's a trout right here. He looks like he probably wants a fly. Don't think it's happening on this little shallow side. I'm going to go back to the deeper water. And my dad has been fishing over there. Hopefully he has caught one and we have four down. Give me some good news. Got one. You got one. Yeah. Heck yeah, we have four now. Nice job, another kokanee? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he came out of the water three times. Just boom. Just, they, yeah, they, they just, shoot out. Yeah, uh, I, I didn't think I was gonna catch him because I wasn't sure I got him hooked. Heck yeah, it. those are good size too. Yeah, those are nice. Oh yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we are in good shape. Maybe just give it a little more dangle and that way we, everybody has a fish. I don't know, they're so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Beautiful things get eaten when you're in the wilderness. I can <laughs> promise you that. <laughs> That's so true. They really have coming up. Yeah, I got a spoon bite and a fly bite, but they didn't connect. Oh, there's one. Oh shoot, that's the bottom. No, that's my special lure, my money maker, my little mystery lure. It's caught lunch. I think we're gonna have to say goodbye, folks, sadly. Yep, there she goes. Well, it served its purpose. We already have one in the cooler and we have three more to add. I don't know what is going on with the trout out here, but they're like non-existent. We have not been able to catch them in the lake. We've been able to catch them out of some streams and that's pretty fun, but just, you know, camping by the lake, going for food. I figured we'd catch a lot more trout, but these are actually my favorite, so it's not a bad thing. We got enough. The girls are actually cooking up some stew and some cornbread right now, and this is going to be a beautiful addition. Dad, you've never had a kokanee. No. And my then first. mom's never had a kokanee, so this is going to be first time. First time taste testers. So just to quickly go over how you do these, you're going to take your knife and you go up right here, the, the anal fin, the anal, anal area, if I can say that, YouTube. Um, this is a biological culinary situation, so just deal with that, computers. You go up right here, and then you just make a little cut on the back of the head, right in that back meat right there, and then you can just take the, the head and the guts and pull everything off. So I'll show you guys how to do that really quick. So we'll take our knife, we'll just run that straight up here. You're gonna get to like the neck area and then stop. Yeah, this is definitely a male because I can see his his white uh, sacks. And then you take your knife, you go right behind the head, right here. And once you reach about that spine area, you wanna just take your thumb, go in right here and then pull down at the same time from the top 
and then the head and the guts come out. Really one of the easiest fish to clean. And these little white little sacks right here, that's how you can tell it's a male for sure, but with that nose, it definitely gives it away as well. So dealing with a male trout. The last thing you do, just take your thumb, your thumbnail, push in right here and go forward down the spine and you'll see that bloodline just come out. And you give it a wash, just a little rinse, and you've got yourself a beautiful salmon. Dad's hooked up again. All right. And it looks like another kokanee. Hey, there we go. Drag him up on the sand, don't lose him. Critical moment. Yep, another salmon. Yeah, it looks different. That is a female, that's our first female that we have caught. Not as crazy on the jumps. Got him on that spoon. So, this is, uh, this is where I'm more accustomed to catching. Look at that. Just silver down the back. The other ones have spots. Just a quick look, the males, they have that little spotted back. Isn't that pretty? And they've got that little jaw and the teeth are way more prominent. And then in the females, they have a little bit of spots. A little different in color, more silvery, white on the bottom. And then their mouth is just that, that plain looking mouth. They have a little bit of teeth, but nothing like the males do. So, all right. We now have five salmon for the grill. Catch them on camera. Yep, show the fishing freaks. You got them. Good job, Amy. <laughs> High five. Good job. <laughs> well, y'all, lunch trout has turned into afternoon early dinner trout because someone needed a little fishing lesson. Give her her first fishing rod, and she is obsessed. I actually filmed all that on the Lake Life Family Channel and other stuff around here. If you want to check it out, linked down below. And we're switching gears. We're going grits. Biscuits. You said grits. I know, but your mom wants biscuits. Okay, what well, mama wants, I guess she gets. We're going biscuits and salmon. So let's cook these babies up. Pretty simple. We're just going to do tin foil. Uh, we have some lemons and some butter, and because we don't have a uh, natural fire using coals, we're going to use propane. A rest. 10,500. So this is our camp kitchen. This is what we've been cooking on this week. It's worked out pretty good. So between the two of us, we have like eight burners. <laughs> <laughs> and we're probably going to do grits or whatever on that. Pretty standard issue. Uh, Coleman propane stove here, and then I've got a lodge griddle on the top. This we, cook, we cooked steaks on this last night. Instead of doing like uh, just a grate, uh, like something like that, um, the heat is really concentrated on these. It's not a very good widespread grill, so I'm going to use the grate, let it heat up, and then cook the salmon in tin foil on top of that. We should be able to get all of them on here and just kind of flip around, you know, let them juices simmer inside and I think it's going to be delicious with some biscuits right there pre-made ready to go OSG specials rosemary and chive and something else cheese Num. yeah cheese. We're, we're gonna eat that fish okay all very simple um, just take a little butter like this you're gonna put that on the inside of your fish I'm going to put that with some lemon pepper and some fresh lemon, mm. and we should be good. No, no. That's no daddy's me. knife. Mm. Grab daddy's knife. No, so I'm stuffing a couple of lemons in there, 
I have the lemon pepper inside. Then we take a stick of butter. I like to go one on the inside and then maybe one or two on the outside. Just go one for this guy. We'll wrap it up, head to tail, fold like that. And then fold it up like a burrito. And then wha-bam. That's three, I got one more to do. And we're gonna get this thing fired up and get them cooking. It doesn't take very long. Fish going on. Not a big sizzle. <laughs> <laughs> I just know this one on the right while I hear it sizzling now. Perfect. It was meant to be five fish on the stove. It's been about 15 minutes and I'm going to, I've kind of rearranged them because the heat source is kind of tricky on these. One side's hotter than the other, so I've been playing musical fishes, but now what I'm gonna do is flip them over and this is gonna be the final maneuver. They'll pretty much cook all the way with the tin foil, just from the steam on both sides, but this is just gonna give it that little extra heat on that other side that hadn't been getting as much. Some of the butter is gonna come out of the cracks, to be expected, but we'll leave these on here for about five minutes this way, and then they should be done. You wanna see so far? I wanna I see think they're what's almost going done. on Whoa. Oh my, my. I would say that just about, I would say they're done. They're big biscuits. But you smell it, it's a they're little burning on the bottom. Biggins. I think they're done, because they feel good. It's time for you to be the taste tester. Well, all I need is a plate. Plates are right there, oh. fish are right here. Forks are over here. All right. The classic camp plate with a salmon. All right. A tasty biscuit, possibly. We have biscuits? We have biscuits. All right. Let's get this man a biscuit. Let's Lake Fork Mom with the oh Make Every Cast Count sweatshirt, bringing it back. Yeah. Nice Ooh. looking biscuit. Tasty biscuit. Let's get a good Ooh. shot of that. monster size Oh, it's cheating good. Thank you. Mm. Okay. You Tell us what you got on this. Okay, give me a Your second. first kokanee salmon ever. <laughs> give the man a minute. I know you want to enjoy it. There's no better view. This is what it's all about right here. This view right here. It's so picturesque, man. Just just a few hours ago, you were down there giving it a dangle, catching these things oh, no. in the mountains. And now it's sitting right here in front of you. There you go. Got a few bones on it. Kokanee salmon. Mmm. That's outstanding. Is that good? Yeah. I think it's better than the trout, fresh. There was no, uh, I didn't taste any bones. Mmm. Thumbs up. It's good. It's different, right? It's very good. What would you compare it to? You know, it's it's you can taste some salmon. It's kind of like a cross between a salmon and a trout. I think so. Yeah, yeah. it's not like a full salmon, yeah. what you would expect. Your, hus sorry. your husband was down there working hard to provide you these fish. That's half the taste. This is good. You cooked it. You did a really good Thank job. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So you like rainbow trout. It's one of your favorite mm, fish. How would I you do. compare it to that? Similar. Very yeah. similar? Mm -hmm. OSG. Coming You've never in. had a fresh one. I have never so had So I want to get your one. opinion too. Okay. I'll fold it back. Uh, yeah, you just kind of want to peel the skin back and then the rest is kind of just easy. Oh. Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah, when they're really fresh, the skin just... You can eat the skin if you yeah, want, but... Yummy. That is perfect. Good job. Then you just take your fork and kind of flake it off of there, off the bone. Let's see. Kind of push it away from the spine. Like this? Yep. And on the top side, you go the opposite direction. There you go. Oh, let's get a bite. Oh, Dad, do you want to bite that? We got on that. You did that perfect. Is that perfect or what? Mm. Oh, what? Well, Debbie. Amy wants her. Amy wants want her. She wants her dinner. Mm -hmm. Amy, do you want to try a bite? Let's see. 
She's never really eaten fish. Mm, yeah, she kind of comes and goes. Not with really, fish. her thing. Okay, Amy girl, take a bite. Lemon butter sauce. Look, take a bite. Mmm. <laughs> you get some You'll lemon. Grow into it. You get some lemon on that. <laughs> You'll grow into it, girl. Well, she's eating it. She is. You like it? Is good? that good? Yeah. <laughs> what was that? It was like a yes, no, I don't know. Well, how would you compare it to rainbow trout and fish you've had in the past? Let's go compare it to crappie. Crappie's the best. I would, I <laughs> I would still agree. say crappie's number one up yeah. there. Yeah. But even back at home, I loved the salmon more than the trout. Yeah. And I will still say, I, I still love the salmon. You still so, love? The salmon. The, you like the salmon better? Yes, I than do. Than the trout. Uh -huh. Okay. I'm the Lake Fork girl. family. The trout. Lake Fork family approves of the trout. Mom has always loved trout. Uh, trout, but this is salmon, kokanee salmon, which is a little different, but everyone's digging in. More like a now we feast. Trout. Go ahead and smash it y'all because you know that's what it's all about. Just hanging out with the family, friends here at the lake, catching some fish, shoreline within hours, putting them on the heat and putting them in your face. Absolutely delicious. And it's time for me to go eat. And I want to thank you guys for tuning in for all the adventures. You know, I've spent a couple of weeks up here in Colorado. I absolutely love it. Big shout out to, to Colorado one of the greatest outdoor states. It's kind of like the colder version of, of Texas, you know? Uh, I've run into a lot of Texans up here and there's a reason why. It is amazing weather. Colorado, a good place to be. If you're from Texas, come on up here, September, October, it gets really cold, but good place to give it a dangle and just enjoy the great outdoors. You don't have to fish. I mean, catching a fish is a bonus when you're looking at this. So it's time to get back home. I will see you guys soon back in Texas, signing off from Colorado, later. Mm -hmm.